Every time you finish a run or a workout, the chances are you're already thinking about jumping straight in the shower and getting on with the rest of your day. Not so fast. I'm Anna and today on The Running Channel, Andy and I are gonna be making the case for investing a small amount of time after your run to do all of the right things to help improve your chances of staying injury free and make you feel tip top, ready for the next time you go out to run. That's right, after our video all about everything that you should do before heading out for a run, loads of you got in touch with us to ask what you should be doing after your runs. So we've put together a routine to help you maximize your recovery and ultimately improve your performance. But before we dive into all that good stuff, if you're new to The Running Channel, please do hit subscribe and tap the bell icon to be notified when we upload new videos about running, which we do every week. There is so much information out there when it comes to the best things to do after you've run. So we've spoken to some top physiotherapists who work with Olympic athletes to ask them how they interpret the science and what they recommend to their athletes so we can pass it on to you. We know that everyone's tight on time, so we've done our best to distill that advice into a bite-sized routine that you can refer back to in the future. One of the things that the experts did emphasize is there's actually an optimal order in which to do things. Namely, starting with a cardiovascular focus, so thinking about things like the blood flow to the muscles. Following that with a musculoskeletal focus, which is things like muscles, fascia and joints and so on. And finally, a neuromuscular focus, so thinking about proper function and activation of muscles. It sounds complicated, but we're going to talk you through it. Cool down, warm down, potato, potato. We did a poll and asked you what you call it and it came out totally split. So whatever it is you do call it, it's really important to make sure you take time at the end of your run to warm down properly. Don't just come to an abrupt stop. So this could involve some walking or some slower pace running where you focus on higher cadence with a shorter stride length. This period of reduced intensity helps to bring down your heart rate whilst keeping you moving reducing the muscle temperature, but also helping to flush out the byproducts of exercise like lactate and free radicals. Without this, the muscles can stay tense, which can limit the impact of the stretching and the movements to come. And when you do come to a stop, think about starting to rehydrate. So replacing those fluids that you've lost through sweat by drinking water or maybe even an electrolyte drink after your run. Whilst you're still warm, now's the time to run through a sequence of static stretches. Now we're calling this a flow here because the aim isn't to just put together a handful of disconnected stretches. Instead, it's to move between a sequence of closely related stretches in a clear order. This flow sequence is targeting muscles and fascia. So it's gonna look at restoring water balance, elastic capacity, and also moving metabolites to the tissues. So we're gonna be looking at holding these stretches for 15 seconds at a time, and that is to reduce muscle stimulation, to reduce trigger points and knots, and also to flow easily into each movement. Don't force it. We're going to move through four different positions of hip flexor stretch here. Remember, 15 seconds in each position. Start in a lunge position, keep the back leg straight and step forward, keeping the weight on the front leg. Try to push the back heel towards the ground. Now slowly lower the back leg until the knee is approximately one inch off the floor and hold that position. Let the knee hit the floor and lunge forward with your weight onto the front foot. Reach up to the ceiling with the palm of the arm on the same side. Now turn the back leg across the body so that the knee is pointing 45 degrees away from you and lunge forward to feel the stretch in the groin. Now repeat that sequence for the opposite leg. There are two positions here. So firstly, on your hands and knees with both feet touching and the knees apart, sit back into the heels and drop onto your elbows, keeping your bum up towards the ceiling so that you feel the stretch in the groin. In the future, you might want to also try this with your feet apart. Now move to a sitting position with your body upright and the weight on your hands in front of you so that you sit back onto your heels or ankles. With your knees and feet together, sit back onto your heels with your hands on the floor behind you. Now lean back whilst engaging your core to keep your hips up and forward so that all your weight is backwards. 
Feel a stretch in your quads, ankles and feet. Now let's take a look at two positions to stretch your glutes. So just note they do seem very similar and the key is the knee position of your front leg. So start on your hands and knees and take one knee forwards and the other knee back. Cross the front foot in front of the back knee to make a figure of four shape and then drop down onto your elbows and slide your back leg away from you so that you're resting on your front hip. You should aim for your back leg to be as straight as possible. And the second one is very similar and comes from the same starting position but this time keep your knee and shin across your body at right angles and bring your chest down towards your shin and then repeat on the other side. Okay, moving on to your hamstrings, you should be aiming to touch the outside of the ankle of the leg that you bend towards on these. So first off, stand with your feet wider than shoulder width apart. Now reach both hands down to the outside of your left foot, lifting your chest as you do so. So maintain a good posture and bend from your hips and don't round your back. This means your eye line should be forwards rather than down. Then repeat on the other leg. Remember, aiming to touch the outside of the ankle of the leg that you're bending towards. Now, from a standing position, bring your feet to shoulder width apart and do the same movement. And finally, bring your feet together and bend the knee of the opposite leg that you're turning towards. So the leg that you are turning away from should be bent. For the calf, there are two positions for each leg. Firstly, stand with your back heel off a step or just leaning into a wall keeping your back leg straight to stretch your gastrocnemius. Now, in a similar position, but this time bend the back leg to stretch the soleus, which is the lower of your calf muscles. Repeat both of these for the other leg. This is the last one now. So lying on the floor on your back, pull one knee up to your chest and hold, tucking your hips under and keeping your core tight. Then repeat this with the other leg on the other side. We know you're always pushed for time, but if you want to maximise recovery, then now might be the time to consider doing a little bit of foam rolling. We've got a video on the running channel all about everything you could possibly need to know about foam rolling, including how to do it best. So do check that out. And if you can, take a little bit of time now to do some foam rolling to potentially reduce the impact of delayed onset muscle soreness, increase flexibility and reduce any muscle fascia adhesions. Don't worry, we're not saying that you need to add yet more stretching into your routine, but we just wanted to go through and show you the difference between the 15 second holds that we just did in the flow sequence and longer holds of up to 30 seconds. The shorter stretch holds influence muscles and fascia, whereas longer stretches influence joints, tendons and ligaments. So if you have any particular areas that you often need to spend a bit of time on or that you're prone to issues with, then now might be the time to look at doing two 30 second holds on each of those areas. Now this is the bit that really surprised me when it came to talking to the experts about what to do after every run. So this one time-wise is probably best reserved for after hard workouts or long runs, but we do challenge you to give it a go, see if it makes a difference and let us know in the comments how you found it. So. We've gone through looking after the cardiovascular system by doing a cool down, and we've looked after our musculoskeletal system through doing the stretching and foam rolling. So now let's look at reactivating or reminding the key muscle groups how they should be functioning. You're essentially telling your brain, this is how I want you to work, to re-engage postural muscles that might have become inhibited following a tough run or workout. Think about trying this short four minute reactivation circuit. Start by dropping onto your elbows and holding a plank position for 30 seconds. Then into a slow high knee walk that's nice and controlled. Think about counting to six through each individual knee movement. Do five each side, so 10 steps in total. Then back into a plank position, this time on your hands and hold it for 30 seconds. That's two minutes, so repeat it and there's your four minute reactivation circuit. So there's one last thing that's worth bearing in mind, and that is that for a lot of us, 
running can be pretty well connected to our psychology. So if you spent the time going through all the rest of the routine, then now might be a really good time to practice some mindfulness. So take a seat, close your eyes, focus on your breathing, and then turn your attention to each part of your body, starting with the top of your head, all the way down to the tip of your toes and observe how each part of your body feels. And that's it really. Other than getting some good fuel in, those are the physical things that you can do to help aid your recovery and make sure that you're feeling at your best the next time you go out to run. We hope you found this video useful and that you might revisit it to run through some of the routines that we've mentioned. We'd love to hear from you to find out how you get on. Do let us know in the comments as well as telling us if there's any post-run rituals that you swear by. But before you go, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to The Running Channel, and we'll see you next time.